My name is Andy Houston, and I serve as the executive director of our fraternity. I'm delighted to have you with us today. Got a number of folks from our team here, and we'll um, briefly go around the horn and do our staff introductions. We'll save time at the end for some Q&A to address um, items of your interest that we may not get to in the presentation. Michelle? Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Peterson. I'm the Assistant Executive Director um, for the fraternity. Um, I oversee um, working with our staff who travels and visits, visits our chapters, um, our educational programming, and also our standards. Uh, my name is Sam Friday. I'm the Director of Operations for the fraternity. Uh, I work with a small portfolio of chapters and assist Michelle with uh, any of the educational programming standards and then also any of our in-house logistical items. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick James Wright III, and I am an educational leadership consultant. You may also hear the term chapter coach throughout the presentation, uh, but I work directly with our student leaders and you all as fraternity and life advisors, um, assisting the students in their everyday operations. Hello, everybody. My name is Zachary Newman. Feel free to call me Zach. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, but also with Patrick, I serve as an uh, educational leadership consultant as well. Um, so similar operations as Patrick, working with university campus-based professionals, uh, as well as our direct um, leaders uh, and chapter chapters as well. So this is the team that you're going to hear from today. Um, our Director of Communications and Alumni Engagement is Kel Kelby Dolan. Director of Growth is Alex Hart. He's working on another AFA presentation at this time. Our director of uh, finance is Diana Thompson, uh, but good to put faces, live faces in this case with email addresses is um, there's been a lot of correspondence between campuses throughout the year. To give you kind of a quick snapshot of where we are as an organization this fall, I'm gonna give you some uh, quick highlights and numbers. Sigma FME currently has a presence on 44 campus with act campuses with active chapters, three of which are provisional chapters, meaning newly installed uh, groups whose charters get ratified at our convention in the summer. Our membership is down about 24% this year. Just want to be candid and, and share that number. Um, we've seen a lot of slip in junior and senior retention, which isn't surprising. and it's kind of tracking on par with what we were projecting in terms of the fall. And we'll talk a little bit about resources that we um, put up through the summer to try to help minimize that impact. Our organization's new member recruitment efforts have gone pretty well um, considering the landscape that we're in with 314 new members reported this year. That's almost half of our fiscal year goal as an organization. Um, and we were also, in addition to this, able to have uh, almost 200 students from the spring term who weren't initiated um, done virtually. So this already this fall, we've had uh, nearly 300 students virtually initiated, conducted by members of our staff and our international officers, uh, taking our, our ritual book and converting that to an online experience as best as we could and um, seems to have been going over really well and help facilitate chapters uh, figuring out how to do that. On the recruitment end, we've seen some really good results. Obviously, some groups are doing extraordinarily well. Some are struggling and some are still confused um, despite the coaches' efforts, but 40%, that's a good number, 40% did equal or better to their last fall results um, in any of the groups that have reported. So that gives us heart. We're um, continuing to do roundtables to, to push um, and give groups confidence and resources to understand how to navigate this, um, depending on what campus format they have for the rest of the academic year. At this point, finances are probably still a concern uh, thing that you're hearing on your respective institution campus. 70% uh, of our chapters have fully paid their annual dues. We do all of our dues billing in the fall. Uh, that was not ideal for this year in COVID, but um, good news is we're we're about 70% all the way collected. Um, we've worked with some chapters who reached out to us on payment extensions, et cetera. The other biggie that hits in the fall is our uh, risk management contribution structure, the insurance program. 98% um, of the groups have paid 
which uh, gave me a little bit of a sigh of relief as we're thinking about what that means for our operational budget. We, uh, we did keep the rate flat this year and we did see a, a flat, just a slight uh, uptick in rate per man. Um, so all in all, there's a lot of instability in the insurance market. I know that's a, an extra source of frustration this year when the majority of what students are paying in to their local dues are being allocated to that program. So I wanted to give you all a little bit of additional information on that. Um, our renewal was December 1. So if your institution is looking for updated policy, additional insured language and that stuff, just let us know and we'll get you those updated materials because um, we just wrapped that up. We do have uh, a couple of highlights that we'll share with you. We, we wanna continue to tout the uh, good success of our chapters and some of the messaging that we had going through the summer. Uh, so here's a quick example of what our students were hearing from us. What if I told you Sigma Alpha Mu's lifelong membership was built for these unprecedented times? Moments that our founders could not have fathomed. As we are challenged with being socially distant, fraternalism has never been more relevant. After campuses closed this spring, our members persevered, led fundraising efforts, shared acts of kindness to healthcare workers, and organized blood drives. Sammy's invested over 6,000 hours of service to their communities, raised over $230,000 for philanthropic causes like the Alzheimer's Association and the Judy Fund. On campuses and online, our fathers excelled, making the Dean's List 523 times, serving on 18 IFC executive boards and two as Halal presidents. This spring, Sam Foundation provided COVID relief grants $29,000 to 43 members who needed immediate financial assistance. Semi alumni led all inspiring companies who donated goods, services, and PPE. We will continue to provide value for our members and chapters, in person or virtual. Prioritizing growth this fall, the fraternity will add active chapters at New Pi Chapter in Colorado, Omicron Chapter in Cincinnati, Epsilon Theta Chapter at West Virginia, and Sigma Alpha Chapter, which is home to the beloved Bill Schwartz at Oklahoma, where we will also celebrate their centennial along with Omega at Toronto, Sigma Beta at Ohio State, and Sigma Gamma at Tulane. We've witnessed unparalleled alumni engagement through chapters and alumni associations across North America as fraternalism zoomed we continue to be resilient, devoted members, selfless volunteers who will inculcate the values of our creed and provide a supportive network unlike any other. Without friendship, we grow cold as stones. Together we can be confident in rising to meet the challenges of tomorrow. Fast and firm. Another thing that was fun out of convention for the last 18 months, we've had a group working on our strategic plan. And I'll just read this. Uh, I've got some follow-up slides that you can get a sense of where we are headed as an organization. But um, that group, after doing a lot of research, their, their vision is to transform Sigma Alpha Mu into the first choice for collegiate students looking for a forward-thinking, inclusive fraternity which enhances the university experience and prepares the fraternity member for a fulfilling life. So the initiatives that we have underpinning that strategy are a little bit about our international structure and infrastructure, um, building identity and increasing engagement opportunities, leveraging new programs uh, for chapter management, um, tools like Chapter Builder, like Chapter Spot, um, and optimizing revenue to help offset some of the undergraduate expenses. How can we diversify the international organization's finances? The next category 
is system st sustainability. So that's um, being more data driven. We have more surveying assessment that's coming out of the organization to be responsive to our student needs, uh, growth um, of our existing chapters and through an expansion effort, it continues to be a priority. And then expanding our community to include diverse and inclusive membership that reflects social change in demographics. Um, culture is the third bucket, uh, making sure that we continue to be value driven, enabling our students and alumni to thrive in their academic, personal and professional lives. Again, inclusivity comes up on this bucket too. Again, this was 18 months ago and it, it's now kind of more of a, a ubiquitous conversation, but um, the good news is our organization is, is doing the work to help uh, support and serve our students. And then uh, from a culture standpoint, driving some more discovery with our values, what that means, and how do we leverage that as an international and a local experience for, for branding and better optimizing communications. And then at the local level, um, it's no surprise that our 47 chapters look, act, uh, feel a little bit different while all carrying the brand of Sigma from you. And we wanna continue to ce celebrate and support that individual chapter diversity, um, continued growth um, through local efforts, and then providing safe, desirable and accessible student housing. So those may be things that um, you hear students talk about. Um, we're going to be weaving this, we launch this in August, we're going to be weaving more details of that plan through our educational programs, through our follow-up with chapter officers, advisors, and leadership. But I thought it would be good for you all to be aware of some of the movement happening in the international fraternity. And a final point on the DEI effort. Um, this summer, in response to a lot of things happening in the world, we were able to launch a uh, Summit Against Hate program for fraternity and sorority executives through FEA with ZBT, AE, FI, SDP. Um, we had nearly 400 participants in that program through a five-week um, five course. And the results were really um, impressive, uh, good dialogue. We have some good facilitators and relationships as a result of that. We're exploring next steps, but we thought it was important to help um, both ourselves, our team, and our interfraternal uh, fraternity executive partners be more prepared to understand at an individual level and an organizational level how we can continue to help the conversations that are happening on campus. We've got a DEI survey um, to get better feedback from our students and how well they are uh, feeling like they belong, that they have somebody who's supporting them, um, that their needs and concerns are, are being heard and met. Um, our DEI work group is also developing an anti-racism, anti-bigotry policy and resolution for our board of directors. And maybe something we see at our convention this summer um, and strong feedback that we've received on that from student leaders who've had input. And then we've, um, we're continuing to work that forward by assessing some needs for educational programs, reviewing governing doc documents and policies um, to make sure that the fraternity experience is a positive one for all of our members. And um, if members are feeling um, challenged, if they, they're experiencing incidents of um, bias or discrimination, um, that they have an opportunity to report that back through the international fraternity. I know some of you who have joined us on the call have, have helped uh, intervene in some instances where folks are uncomfortable and we appreciate that. Um, we want you to continue to know that we are going to help our chapters facilitate that process as, as best we can and continue to learn and grow from that. 
Yeah, and as Andy was sharing, um, we definitely have started a lot of new things this year. Uh, great time to implement new things, new technologies. Um, so I think it was quite uh, opportune that we started our chapter support model. Um, so specifically, uh, or predominantly Zach and I work with the chapters, but Sam also has a few. Um, where we are specifically working through each of the, the problems, the concerns, the challenges that our chapters have. Uh, one of the most impactful things to me, uh, working with the students in this chapter coaching model where we're meeting twice a month, uh, so every other week, uh, one of the students, I told him, I was like, hey, let, let's take a little break. You've been working through your, your goals and achieving them. Let's not set goals this week. And he actually stopped me and said, hey, I want to continue to push on because I feel that this is necessary. And this is something that I didn't get um, when we were just having the, the check-ins where the chapter coaches, ELCs were visiting the campus. So I know that from that moment, um, it was true to me that the students en enjoyed having that pushback, that consistent communication, and also someone to say, hey, this isn't working. How can we reassess figure out what we have and move forward. Um, so just to kind of go through the process of this model, it started this semester after our convention, um, or at the end of this uh, summer, I'm sorry, after our convention, we check in with the students, specifically the chapter presidents are who we're checking in, but they're also able to invite chapter officers or in general members who are interested in getting involved with the fraternity at a leadership level. Um, and then that also looks like working with our advisors. They have a check-in call with Michelle Peterson every other month. Um, and they're also able to reach out to the chapter coaches or any fraternity staff anytime they have a problem or something they need to work through. And then as, um, as, as I said before, again, recognizing uh, some of those concerns that we have for some reason, fraternities and sororities think it's great to change leadership every year, which is a horrible business model, but we can definitely do our best to work through that. And what that looks like is providing them with resources to talk about what does it look like to have an executive transition? Um, so something that was not necessarily new this year, but something that we streamlined just to help the officers and students understand what's going on is we created a guide for officer transitions. Um, so through our coaching calls and also on offline um, conversations that the students request with us for their um, transition meetings, we provided them with a guide that says, these are the questions that we should ask. Here are some of the important things to talk about and also prepare them for their annual review or their chapter performance report. Um, they're able to take this transition guide, use the attached worksheets and submit those to talk about accreditation for their chapter. Um, we also have our chapter leaders day, which is um, happening at the beginning of the year in January. Uh, we'll be virtual this year, so that's super exciting. Um, and then we also have our webinars uh, that we host probably two or three a month at minimum, um, sometimes more than that, depending on what's going on and the ebb and flow of the chapter. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we have for our COVID-19 protocols and I know uh, beginning 2020 and when everything was starting to, to unfold with this, I, I remember talking with Michelle and Andy saying in, in two weeks we'll, we'll be back to normal and we won't have to worry about COVID and here we are what feels like of infinity years later, uh, still still dealing with this. And it seems like uh, we'll obviously continue to deal with this. And so it was important for us to be able to provide uh, resources for our undergraduate members and uh, housing corporations, et cetera, to make sure that they can at least uh, somewhat be prepared to, to deal with this on the local level. Um, so firstly, we have a resource from James, our favorite company, our insurance broker, um, Breaking the Chain of Infection, which provides a lot of great best practices for housing corporations, for uh, proper risk management that they can they can use in reference and we've built uh, a document with that that's included in the roadmap to, to kind of where they can look for things because it's a, a massive document uh, over I would say like 60 plus pages and so lots of great information in there that, that we can use at the chapter level and then also also we've picked out some of these important pieces that are important for our chapters to know and included that in the roadmap um, with the roadmap what we did was we took different areas of chapter operations that we uh, have from our areas for our chapter performance report and built out what are some things that chapters can be doing at the local level during during this time what are areas that might not have been been able to do virtually and how can we uh, make that a virtual experience now or what are some ideas that we can do so we can continue to have this fraternal movement this fraternal experience while we might not necessarily be together um, and so that's uh, became the sigma for me roadmap for 2020 and 2021 um, and that can be found at sam.org slash COVID-19. Um, and so if, if any of the groups that you have or of our groups that you work with or 
sometimes lost or maybe not sure what to do, we can you can always direct them that way. And we also have some really great resources and best practices. Uh, one, for instance, is our senior retention guide where we work with uh, current and former staff members on what are some ideas that we can do to, to kind of give our members uh, the, some resources so that they can help retain upperclassmen and seniors. Uh, since that, since uh, Andy shared, that's a big area where we've seen a lot of uh, retention fall off uh, of our members. And so being able to at least provide some sort of resource that, that they can say, we're giving value to these upperclassmen so that they can continue to be a members of our organization because they're crucial to, to our success as well. Um, and with that, uh, we also have, uh, we've had some some great successes during, during, uh, during this pandemic. Uh, from Andy mentioned successes at recruitment, but we've also had uh, successful transitions happening through this and groups are, utilizing the, the resource, uh, the officer transition guide that Patrick shared and doing some more officer transition virtually. We're seeing a lot of that. We're seeing uh, recruitment, not recruitment, uh, but philanthropy as well, being able to take off during uh, our month of November. Uh, we, our global, our, our philanthropy partner is the, the Judy Fund, which is a subsidiary of the Alzheimer's Association and our chapters were able to raise $22,000 uh, for the Judy Fund and Alzheimer's research. Um, another great example is at our Delta Zeta chapter at Florida International University. Uh, they hosted their annual Miss Florida Lee pageant in a virtual format, had over 300 attendees, and we were able to raise over $10,000, which is incredible. Um, and so not all, not all, you know, out of the, out of the ashes rise like the Phoenix. So we've had our groups really do a great job, and, and some of them have really taken this in stride and, and done some pretty incredible things. Um, and that kind of leads us into talking about some of the, the areas where we've grown a little bit and uh, provided more resources and different technology partners for, for our groups. And I'm gonna let Michelle talk about that. All right, so I had talked about all the resources that we are currently providing to our chapters. Um, this year, even before um, the pandemic hit, as, as you heard from our strategic plan, growth um, is one of our top priorities. Yes, adding more chapters, but also um, retaining our current members of the chapters we have and growing our current chapters. So our board made the financial decision um, to provide chapter builder technology software from Fired Up and also the certified recruiter certification which Fired Up offers. Um, so our, all of our members have access to that. Um, as you may know, um, it takes a little while to get people on board. Um, and so both of these have been incorporated into our annual report. Um, and so they will get points um, and incentive to use those different programs. Um, the certified recruiter um, is about a two hour program where they can, they learn like the basics of recruitment. Um, and then most of you, you probably have heard of Chapter Builder, um, but that is the software that Fired Up uses and all of our chapters have access to that. So we're very excited. Um, this is probably a good thing that if you're having conversations with our chapters, I would ask them like how many of your members are certified recruiters or are like pull up your Chapter Builder in our meeting um, because we would, you know, that's helpful to be hitting it from different perspectives. Um, we had a lot of change this summer um, in addition to the pandemic happening. Um, so we switched from Greek Life EDU um, to Tightrope. Um, so all of our new members are required to complete that before initiation. Um, I know some of your guys, your campuses use um, Greek Life EDU or their university program. So just wanted you to know that that change has happened. And if you need any verification from us that our members are completing that, um, I know some of you have to have that, let me know. Um, one of the other huge change that happened this summer is we changed databases um, in the midst of the pandemic happening. So um, we left Omega Phi and we are now using Chapter Spot and Greekville. Um, Chapter Spot is ran by Salesforce. Um, so we're very excited about the new database. It comes with a lot of cool bells and whistles that I think the chapters um, are really enjoying. Um, some of those being a uh, free website option. We've had a couple chapters take advantage of that, but if they didn't currently have a website, they can run that through our new database. Um, the other one being ma mass ma mailers. So we encourage them to be sending out um, newsletters to the parents and alumni. So there's now an easier way for them to do that. Um, we also have something called um, My Sam University, which was in our new database, and also the Resource Center. Um, as Patrick and Sam had mentioned earlier, we revamped a lot of our resources this year to make them um, more streamlined. We incur included links to videos um, because we know sometimes students don't want to read, but they'd rather watch a three-minute video. So really trying to update our resources um, for our chapter leaders and also our advisors. Um, we also revamped our advisor manual this year. Um, 
including that same format, including videos um, and best practices. The other piece I want to put on your radar is that um, the financial service that we are now using is called Greek Bill. Um, chapters are required to use that service unless they have an exemption and are using their university bursar. But that's the only way um, they cannot use that service is if they are billing through their university. Um, so we have had, it was a transition in kind of getting everybody on board. I think we're at a point where most groups um, are billing through the new service. Um, but that has kind of streamlined everything. Um, and even within Greek Build, there's a lot of cool options of them um, making payment plans and setting up budgets um, and really having everything in one place. That way, when we do transition officers, things don't get lost in a Dropbox somewhere or Google Drive. So um, those are the two kind of new things. And we're very excited for both of those. Um, as some of you may know, in, 2000, in summer of 2019, we launched a new Canada education program for the entire fraternity. It's called the True MDH Initiative. Um, and this is a standardized program that all of our chapters are expected to use when it comes to new member education. Um, they do have an opportunity to select a few things. Um, we provide team builders to them. And, and since the pandemic happened, we have updated that with virtual team builders. So they can pick each week, they get a list of about three or four, they can pick which ones they wanna do. Um, and then there's also a session on chapter history and chapter um, information that they're able to update. But literally within this program, everything is provided to them from um, the PowerPoints, the agendas, the quizzes, the emails they send out, everything is done for them. Um, and none of this is a secret. So when I send out the recording to this email, I will include a high level overview of every week. Um, so you can have access to that because that's probably a good thing for you to be following up when you're meeting with our student leaders. Um, I know some of the university processes have shortened. And so we currently have a four week, a six week and an eight week option that they can run. So we're very excited about that, but I think these are definitely good questions for you to be asking. And if you get a sense that our chapter is not running true MDH, please let me know um, and we can reach out and make sure that that, um, that happens. Um, some other cool resources happening, um, Sigma Alpha Mu Foundation, as you heard in the video, um, we had COVID grants that went live this spring. Um, this winter, we are about to have another cycle of those of about $27,000 worth of grants that students can apply for. So um, if you hear our students talking about members having hardship, definitely encourage them um, to go to our website and apply for those grants. Um, our scholarship program just launched as well with the foundation. So we give out about 130 scholarships a year, um, which encompasses almost $200,000. So um, definitely encourage, same thing. Um, some of the scholarships are chapter specific, but some are just general. So definitely um, encourage when we encourage them as well to be applying for those scholarships. And then lastly, our last resource, um, on the sheet is um, Sam National Properties is the housing arm for our fraternity. Um, they're currently managing nine different properties across the country. And so um, depending on your campus, um, our house may be managed by Sam National Properties, um, but they now have three staff members and really providing a lot of that housing support um, to the house corporations and also the students. All right, some educational programs are happening. So like um, Sam and Andy mentioned this past year, we were one of the groups that moved forward with the completely virtual convention. Um, we had a week full of events and activities um, that was very well received by our membership. Um, if you were one of the first 400 people to register for AFA, you got the AFA in a box, which was inspired by us. Um, for our convention this year, we sent boxes to all of our convention re registrants um, and it was a huge hit. Um, so if you're interested, I got the hookup if you if, if that's something that you want to do, um, but we'll be doing that again, um, just because it, it's hard when you're not in person. So I think everyone getting something in the mail before a conference or a convention happens, I think, helps get kind of people in the spirit and um, kind of that pride behind Sigma Alpha Mu. So we'll continue to do that. Um, as Patrick had mentioned earlier, we typically have our regional conferences that happen in January and February, and we do six of them across the country. It's called Chapter Leaders Day. Um, this year, um, it will be virtual and we're condensing it all into one. So we're going to have about 400 to 500 students um, with, with us the weekend of January 23rd and 24th doing different um, sessions and seminars. 
Um, when I send out the recording of this email, if you are interested in being a small group facilitator, we would love to have you. So I'll include a link of how you can show interest and I'm, I'll reach out to you um, about that. But that program very much, I mean, most of our office, most of our chapters transition um, right now. So most of it is new officers. We're doing officer training with them. We're doing ethical leadership and risk reduction um, work with them. We're talking about values-based recruitment. So kind of all the things. Um, then we're gonna try to do that in a virtual format, which um, as engaging as we can. Um, we also have a webinar series every year, like Patrick had mentioned, where we have um, three to four webinars happening a month um, for different positions within the chapter. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention on this slide is um, the Developing Leaders Initiative. This is one of our premier leadership programs. Um, this is a smaller group of students that's usually, usually selected about 10 to 12 students um, that happens in January. So this will also be transitioning to a virtual experience. Um, the cool thing about this is these, these students get a uh, FaceTime with our board um, and getting to learn more about the organizational structure and just how a, a fraternity or even just a nonprofit board works in general. Um, and then as Andy was mentioning our strategic plan, they're going to get some face time and get to work with our strategic plan committee. Um, so it's going to be about a six week virtual experience that these individuals um, get to participate in. So we're very excited for that. And then lastly um, is standards and accountability. Um, so we have something called the chapter performance report, which is basically our annual report. Um, many of you have similar reports. And so these are the different categories um, that is within our report. We definitely tell our chapters that if they're doing something for you and it's similar, like, Kill tuber, you know, we, we want them to be able to use documentation that they're submitting for your report. So um, just wanted you to be able to see this. The one cool thing is this is now going to be within our database um, in something called the checklist app. So they will be able, they have access to it now. Everything is electronic. They upload documents um, and they can start working on it now. That's one of the biggest things. And I'm sure with your guys' annual reports as well, um, usually they're doing it the last 24 hours before it's due. So we're really um, during the chapter coaching calls that are happening now really until the end of the academic year that will be one thing that chapter coaches are continuing to check in with individuals on like let's go ahead and pull up your CPR what can you submit up until this date um, just so we're not trying to put everything together at the last minute for our semester schools um, the CPR is due June 1 and for our quarter schools they're due um, July 15th um, and then lastly um, I'm the staff liaison that works with our international standards committee um, and so just know that if there are ever any behavior or health and safety concerns with any of our chapters, um, please reach out to me. My email's there and you'll get an email from me following this. Um, we always want to be a partner with you. Um, and so if there's ever a concern and um, some of you on the call, I've talked to you before, um, call me. Um, if I miss your call, I'll call you back that same day because at the end of the day, we, the safety of our members and the guests that are at our events is our number one priority priority. Um, and we're always going to be willing to collaborate either with the FSL office or if things end up going through a university conduct office. Um, we've, we've done some great collaborative investigations. Um, and so we will always um, be that organization that, that picks up the phone and wants to work with you. So just wanted to make sure you all know that. Uh, you heard a little bit about the growth prospects for the organization in the video, but um, we're, we're continuing to develop tools for both chapter specific growth so that they can either sustain, maintain, um, or increase where they are membership wise kind of relative to peers on campus, um, knowing that, that that is going to look different for every single chapter. So that is a, an initiative that continues to grow from our staff and team and our coaching model um, and support. We've got um, the provisional chapters we've just virtually installed our group at Colorado last night. Uh, after virtually installing the group at Oklahoma um, earlier this fall in October, uh, and we've got a planned, uh, it's an interest group who will be um, coming online at Cincinnati in the um, spring term. Um, planned expansions mapped out. West Virginia is the primary project for the spring term and University of Iowa in fall 2021. I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to rejoin that community. Before I get some questions, I think it's just so good to say thank you for um, all the hard work 
for the open communications questions, uh, relaying concerns or other prompts that uh, you've heard throughout the, the year or even the last years. Uh, many of you are, are longtime partners and, and we really value that. Um, we also wanna make sure that you hear us say that we appreciate you and that you know that if there's something that you need or you're having a, a frustration or a challenge, um, to let us know so we can work with you and, and trying to get the best result possible. Um, with that, I wanna open the floor to any questions. Feel free to, um, you may be able to unmute yourself or check the setting. Yeah, just unmute yourself and go and we'll see if there's any questions, comments uh, from the group. And if you don't feel like doing it uh, live and on video, feel free to do the chat feature and I can read those back. I have a question. Um, thank, thanks so much uh, for putting this on and for sharing this information with us. And it's nice to see some of you. I know we've talked many times over the last year or so. Uh, and I, I really wanted to ask, I, I, Michelle, I'm really glad to see the educational program that you're going to be able to share with us so we can work with our, our chapters. Um, Patrick mentioned the, the officer transition uh, guide that you created. I think, is that something that you can share as well so we can interact with our chapter president for the SAMI chapter on that guide too? And is that something brand new that you did? <laughs> Yeah, of course we will. I will include that with one of the resources. It's a PDF. And like I said, there's a lot of, it takes you to a lot of different links, but yeah, happy to share that with you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And what, how are, are you seeing, is that, this is the first cycle then people are going to be using that, right? Yeah. So as I shared, it's a document that we have had over the year. It's a uh, the aggregation of all of our documents in one space. So the students can go to one place and say S transitions, I want this instead of going through a Google file or whatever that may be. So it's been used, but we are revamping it. Mm -hmm. yeah, Repolished. Do they update their progress anywhere on uh, like your, your any type of login uh, program or software that they have to do? Or is that just something that they would talk with their, their headquarters chapter coach on, you know, during their regular meetings? Yeah, so um, through our chapter coaching calls, we do track all of the goals that they're working on um, and have a running list of that and all the days that we work. Um, but they also are able in the specific um, transition guide, there are worksheets that they can fill out and attach. So it's a little bit of both where they are doing it on their own, but we're also having a co collaborative conversation at the uh, headquarters student level. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And one thing to add to that. So within the coaching model, um, we wanted the, everyone to get through the holiday break, but our coaches will be reaching out to all of you as the FSLs to kind of do a mid-year check-in. So kind of look forward for that email. Um, and John, on that call, we're more than happy to share. Um, we have like a um, Excel, what is it? Excel doc um, with every chapter. So within that call, um, Patrick will be happy to share kind of what the goals are the chapters have been working on this year. Cause that is probably helpful for you to know. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Anyone else comments, questions? Uh, I, I have a question. Uh, I'll turn on my camera. Hi, everyone. Hi, Craig Shook uh, at UNLV. Um, so you had mentioned previously in the presentation that, um, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, sweet, sorry, I wasn't sure if that was working. Um, so you mentioned previously in the presentation that uh, numbers were down this semester. I think campuses have seen that as well. Um, and the uh, Sigma Alpha Mu chapter at our campus opted to take a pretty small class. So I'm curious what the messaging has been to chapters about expectations around recruitment and um, what more specifically that has looked like in the pandemic. I'll give you general, Craig, and great question. Um, it's been a blend of uh, optimism, resources, coaching, and here are the tools, right? There, um, we have a relatively small goal for this Fired Up Certified Recruiter Program. Of getting 100 SAMIs certified this year, um, we're not there. And that, that's 
free. It's a $45 value for any member who does it and easy transferable. So we've been pushing that hard, um, pushing the onboarding of using the premium chapter builder tool. And right out of the gate, as we were entering convention, we had some um, really extreme results out of Arizona. I think they took, had taken uh, upward of a 40 man class, which is good any year, a little better than normal for them, but that started to help um, us get student leaders talking about what they're doing and how they're uh, finding success. The challenge was also uh, us talking people off the ledge who are like, oh, we just, we can't do it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, Patrick and Zachary have had those conversations with chapters who weren't gonna do anything and then decided kind of like UNLV, like begrudgingly, oh, we'll do it. Uh, knowing that they wanted to wait till the spring and that delicate dance of, we don't, we can't promise you that spring is gonna be great. Um, while, you know, not bursting their bubble, preparing them for do, do the best that you can now, um, continue and, and learn and grow. Um, there might be some more specific UNLV type follow-up there. Uh, the other, the other part and piece of that is for the groups, the 60% who didn't hit what they normally would have done, uh, they're getting a little more um, prioritized coaching. We've got recruitment specific roundtables um, going so that we're, we're making sure that those groups, um, the, the goal is not that they do exactly as well as that they did last year, but the hope is that um, they realize, you know, if there was a significant dip, what are the steps that we can take today to prepare for what's coming in the spring? Um, there's a good number of deferred campuses, and there's a lot of um, positioning chapters to be prepared for an unstructured, unusual recruitment, you know, where they might be, you know, banking on just having the week of wings and guys and poker and all the normal things that are not gonna convert as well as we need it to. So great question. Um, we can follow up more specifically with you and we will continue to be working with the Delta Upsilon chapter. Awesome, thank you, Andy. Yeah. Is the recruitment certification something that they can do on their own time throughout the year, or is it only offered at certain times for members to complete? It's live 24-7 uh, through, I would say, through April, um, because then we have to decide whether or not we're going to renew that program. Uh, the, the good push is honestly now our director of growth, Alex Hart, is working on some communications because this Thanksgiving until spring term start is that good good time block. Uh, for context, if you haven't seen it, we might be able to uh, fudge our numbers and get you a link to uh, share that with your chapters. And if you happen to dabble yourself into the course and, and see it, it's about three hours worth of content. Uh, short little videos. If you stop and log out, you can come back in. Um, I, when taking it, I don't recall any block being more than 10, 15 minutes. Um, so it's really manageable. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I'm so sorry if I've missed this, but for um, the coaches who I know in, in a regular year would visit in person, and they've been doing a lot of that virtually this fall, I know. Uh, is that good? That's the same thing for this for the spring, or are you planning to, um, do you know when you're going to do live consultant visits again, or coaching visits? Yeah, not not this academic year. Okay. Right. Um, that that was our, our plan going into the fiscal year. Uh, certainly the COVID numbers don't give me any confidence that we're going to resume that earlier than the earlier than usual. Um, there may be instances where um, something really, really urgent happens where we're not prohibited from staff travel. We're just not doing the, the typical consulting visits.
Any other thoughts or questions? To Kevin, to Travis, other folks that uh, haven't heard from, thank you for your uh, hard work and effort. I know uh, Travis, especially at an American, it's been a, an interesting uh, and difficult year. Uh, so we, we appreciate what you're going through on the ground. Um, again, if there's other things that we can do to be supportive, I, I know we've had our own uh, challenges just kind of keeping the, the wheels on the track, so to speak. Um, but if there's anything else that you need from us or we can do to be helpful, let us know. And, and likewise, uh, Kevin, appreciate your, your partnership at UIC. Thanks so much. I went off the screen for a moment. If you could only see my puppy who uh, did not consent to his neutering last week, uh, this work from home is working out quite well for the virtual conference that I can keep track of him. But I don't know if you saw, I was like snapping. He's running around with the cone, right? He's got the cone uh, and can't tell which way is which. So thanks for letting me but do that as I, I've been listening in. And I, and I didn't have a question per se, but I, I wanted to share my thanks and appreciation truly for um, working with us and through all of the campuses in, in our uh, COVID era. I, I applaud the men. Of, of the SAMI chapter at UIC for, for being on the forefront of really good and open discussions around um, racism, our Black Lives Matter movement, um, and particularly in the city of Chicago. Um, you know, in, in all cities, but particularly in the city of Chicago, um, there have been some campus wide movements um, out of um, many leading student orgs. Um, and, and the men have been really, really open and responsive to those conversations and um, then have, have brought those into the IFC. And, and I wanted to mention that two nights ago now then it was the IFC elections for next year, right? Elections for 2021. And, and in some years we have had some, some great members of SAMI step up to, to be on the executive board. And, and while it doesn't look like there'll be anybody on next year's board, their comments and the discussion always stand out. And, and I'm, I'm happy to share that, that they are part of that active discussion and the Q and A, the pro con pro um, and bringing issues like that to the forefront so that um, qualified candidates and good voices are going to continue to lead um, the, the community forward, even if it may not explicitly be, you know, one of the members of, of their org who is sitting in the in the executive board uh, for 2021. So, so some good things um, coming out of that, and, and I wanted to pass that along. Well, thank you for that. And um, again, the, the point which is really helpful for us is the, the local nuance and what's happening in your communities is so important so we can better serve our members and our students um, collectively. So um, when Kevin reached out to us this summer about some concerns, uh, it, it's easier for us to kind of help steer things. Um, and we know that that's even more productive because we're doing it together. So. Kevin, thank you. And you should put your little pup on camera. Um, the world needs more puppies in 2020. I can wriggle him away. You might see him. We've moved him from a traditional cone to like a neck roll pillow, as if he's like flying first class. Um, oh, yeah. It mostly works, except <laughs> dogs are creative. They can still kind of wriggle around and bend their body and get around it. So I was like, I don't know if this helped at all. If there's any questions, uh, comments from anyone else, let us know. If not, we're uh, happy to give you about 10 minutes back uh, to, to go play on Hoova or uh, do whatever you need to do. But um, thank you again. Oh, cute. What's the pup's name, Kevin? This is Fritz. Uh, Fritz is Fritz. a, oh, hi Fritz. Um, yeah. That's his favorite thing is to, uh, try to eat like whatever breakfast crumbs are still in my mouth, I swear. Um, he is a six month old wire hair miniature dachshund. Um, he looks really large in the camera, but he's actually quite small. And again, this neck roll pillow, doesn't it look crazy? <laughs> Uh, like he's trying to fly somewhere. But if, if this ever happens to you, uh, there are suitable sizes all the way from 
extra, extra small for baby kittens all the way to much larger um, if you have to get rid of the cone because uh, he was not having it with the cone. So try this. Very cute. They're always so sweet. The, the students ask constantly because they know Fritz exists. And I'm like, are you sure you want him at the council meeting? Are you sure about that? They're like, yes, yes. Oh, uh, thank. I think you made my day. Good, good. Okay, he'll re up here. We'll, we'll put him when I go to the dark section and it's not minute. We'll just put his face up and see what people say. All right. Well, there's your your minute of uh, puppy love. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks everybody else for tuning in. As always, we're here. If you need to contact any member of our team. Um, you can find all our info on sam.org. You'll be getting an email follow-up, some opportunities to continue to provide input feedback. Um, and again, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your virtual AFA experience. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. That's a wrap. Yeah. How do I stop recording?